This is the I Love Success Podcast. I'm Peter Jurukowski, and I have made a vow to myself to help as many people as possible to achieve their dreams. Let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of the I Love Success Podcast. Before I introduce this week's guest, and he is amazing, I just want to thank you for watching and listening to this show without you we can't do this. So super grateful. And I'm so glad that you're taking your life seriously enough to do something cool and go after your dreams. But I want to hear from you. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever goal you have, please reach out to me and tell me a little bit about your journey, how we can help. Or if you just want to give me a success story, I will be super happy to hear from you. The easiest way is Peter Jumrakovsky on Instagram or info at ilsuccess.com. As you might know by now, our mission is to help at least 10 million people in 10 years to go after their dreams. We can't do that ourselves. So if you like this show, share it with somebody that needs to hear this message. This week, I'm here with a new friend, his name is Pablo Rivera Espinosa de los Monteros. Yes. Did I get that right? You got it correct, man. Uh, he <laughs> is an amazing human being. He has a great story that we're going to share today. He works as an image consultant. So he helps people with their style, their communication, the whole package of delivering who you really are in this world. He's also very spiritual. He's into meditation. He's gone through a lot of uh, shit and cool stuff, and we got to share that as well. So buckle up and get ready because here we go. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good one. <laughs> Definitely buckle up. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Pablo, you know, sometimes in life when I meet people that I've never met before, it feels like I've I've known them for a very long time. And you're one of those people. Yeah. I, I, I can't explain why, but it feels like we we met three times now. Yeah. And it feels like you've been a long time friend of mine. That's weird, but yeah, that's true. That's weird, strangely true. Like I feel the connection, like yeah. just more at ease. That's yeah. true, man. Yeah, thank you. Why do you think that happens sometimes in life that we get struck either by a friend, it could be love, it could be a hobby, a passion. Yeah. Why do you think that happens for us human beings that sometimes in life it's like a boom, this just, we're just on the same yeah. frequency, you know? Yeah, the connection. Well, first of all, I want to uh, thank you for having me here. This is an honor. I fucking love it. I've seen your, by the way, I cuss a lot. <laughs> <All good. laughs> I don't know. So, <laughs> and um, thank you, man. But the first connection, I think there's a various, various different things that happen, right? Uh, the first thing is there's people that manipulate this right i think there's people that know their communication and they know how to build that instant rapport i know i've seen them and i don't like them i don't like that type of rapport like fakeness like oh, i want something out of peter man so i'm gonna create i'm gonna uh, copy your body language i'm gonna wear certain colors that immediately will get inside of your subconscious brain and be like oh man i, I, I don't know why but i like you yeah. that's a sneaky trait right that's one way that i've learned <laughs> another one is well, you know, like you said, I'm very spiritual. I think that, uh, shit, I'm going to talk about spirituality, whether you believe in this or not. I think we're all talking about the same thing, whether you're Christian, uh, you, Aztec like me or whatever. We have been through many different stages with our spirit because we cannot be just identified with this, this. This is going, we're going to leave this to earth, right? Yeah. So we are something that is beyond our body and our minds. And that has been through so many different things that sometimes, whether you believe in reincarnation or not, sometimes the karma, which is the actions that you have been taking for a long period of time, yeah. we meet each other again. And maybe that's why, maybe sometimes you see someone and you cannot explain why, but you're just like, I feel like I know you. And there, there's no su such thing in the universe as coincidences, right? There's only consequences. So I believe that's maybe we have met in another life. I don't know. And I love that. And I was I was contemplating about that going home from Modern Success event yeah. uh, last week from Vegas. When I was driving home, I was just like, here's this guy from Mexico. Mexico City. I am originally Macedonian, born in Sweden, and I meet him and... 
I feel like I know him. And this has nothing to do with skin color, no. uh, nationality, uh, sex. And like, it's just somehow we are connected as human beings. And I, I just thought that was so beautiful because we sometimes we look at people that look different from, each, from us mm -hmm. and we are disconnected to them. But real connection doesn't, doesn't know that, right? No. Yeah, that's true. You know what? The heart doesn't know about nationality, skin color, doesn't know about what your profession, whether you're driving a Lamborghini or not. The heart doesn't give a fuck about that. Yeah. And even beyond that, I would say the soul, right? I think that we all come from the same source. And if you study the ancient traditions like I have, I've been with a lot of um, native people from different places, not only Native Americans, not only natives in Mexico, but also in, in Spain, in Europe. I've spent a lot of time over there too, right? And I've realized that if you pay attention to what they have been saying, is that everything is connected. So we all come from the same source. And if you just tap into that, maybe people like you that are a little bit more open, you've tapped something within yourself. And I can see that, right? People can see that about you. You can see that about me and maybe other, other of my friends, right? Like mine, right? Yeah. And when you open up, then you realize like, oh, we're made of the same. So we transcend to a different place in that we recognize that which is beyond that which is that that what the what was what is and that that will we for forever will be right that that's why that's the whole thing about namaste you know that is yeah i'm not saying hello to peter i'm not saying hello to the men i'm saying hello to that which is beyond and it will always be there the energy within you yeah <laughs> and we recognize that and i think that's lovely man i, I love it i love it i love it pablo and, <laughs> thank you for uh, that yeah of course uh and I want to go. I want to go a little bit deep with you, yeah. and because you yeah. did this amazing speech uh, last week, and I, I was just so honored to hear your story. Uh, can we just start with going back to a really tough question and, and see what 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 comes up? So, what was the worst day of your life, and how did it change you as a human being? Oh man, that's a great question. I love it. You're not gonna get me to shut up now. <laughs> Well, the worst day, I've been through so many worst days, yeah. and uh, maybe you, you can relate to that, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I could say one, but in my mind, I'm going to be like, man, I've been through even worse than that. So yeah. I don't know, man. I've placed myself in so many bad experiences, sometimes on lonely, sometimes on purpose, just to grow, yeah. <laughs> just to do it on purpose. Like, I got to I gotta overcome this. Yeah. But for sure, for sure, it was when I was dealing with uh, suicidal thoughts, right? Depression. Deep, deep de depression that I was uh, on five different types of medications. Nobody knew what the fuck to do with me. I was going with uh, three different psychologists. Psychologists, man, three different fucking psychologists. And not single one of them could do something. I was like, yeah. why am I even here talking to you guys? Three different people that don't, don't know what to do. And then uh, the psychiatrist, of course, that was giving me the, 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 the medicine. And I felt so out of place. I felt like I didn't belong. In this universe, I feel like, okay, man, maybe I'm from Mars. Yeah. <laughs> shit, maybe God made a mistake and sent me to Earth when in reality I'm from, shit, I don't know, Alpha Centauri or something <laughs> like that, right? I felt so, so, so awkward, so bad, so out of place, so different. Not in a sense of, oh, I'm better. I just I really, like, I was the kid that, that could talk. Don't get me wrong. I could talk to the loser down to the corner, like the worst, like the bullied, right, that everyone was bullying him. I could talk to him. And I could be like, in quotes, his friend. But I could also talk to the alpha guys, to the cool guys. I could also blend in with them. So I was within and without. I was like not belonging anywhere. But I could blend in with everyone. So that made me feel even more awkward. Like, okay, where do I belong then? Shit, who do I, who's my tribe? What's wrong with me? And I felt so bad. So you could say that for sure that was the, um, the first worst experience. One of the, my first worst experience that... Feeling like, you know what, that's it. And and something that I didn't mention, because you know a little bit the story that I tried to, you know, commit suicide and jump off of, of my building. And unfor uh, fortunately, my mom, she came to the rescue, like, yeah. spiritually. I don't know. You know that moms are super connected, right, in a yeah. spiritual sense. So she sensed it. She came. She, 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 saved, she saved me. But even after that, I tried to do it again with a bunch of pills, man. I just said, fuck. And there was um, 
family reunion when I was doing that. So now I understand why I did it. But back then I was like, you know what, man, fuck this and pop, 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 all these pills. And then the second thing I know, I wake up in a fucking hos- in a hospital. Yeah. You know, pumping all this shit. I was like, God damn, what the How fuck am I doing? How old were you at that point? I was 18 or 17 or something. Yeah. So the first time I was 15. And then the second time I was like, not pushing 19. Yeah. So there was a gap, but then still. That same feeling was there, like, no, 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 you don't belong. There's this little voice that is always trying to hurt you, whatever. So it was, that's, that's for sure one of the worst days, man. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and how, how, how did that change you? Because I know uh, you grew up, grew up without a father, right? Yeah. And you loved fashion. And um, like, can you just talk a little bit about that? Like, because you loved fashion, you loved being stylish. And also, uh, that was not okay in your household in a way right yeah i'm glad you brought it up yeah well i've always been into fashion right uh when i was a little kid i used to change four three to four times then out an outfit and my mom would get me and be like pablito what the <laughs> fuck are you doing i just that's just, just uh, watch watch these ah. but I, I would just love it and then i remember my first girlfriend as well I would go shopping with her, which is the opposite of what men are supposed to do, right? You always see it on the advertising, like, oh, men hate going shopping with women. And I was like, woo, yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so from because of my background being Mexican, right, and growing up without a father, my mom thought that she needed to be tougher on me yeah. because I grew up without a masculine figure. Yeah. Not a single uncle, no one, nobody came with us just to see what a man is supposed to be like. What, what, what makes you a man? That always stood, stood in my mind like, okay, I like this, but is it okay if I'm a man? Should I enjoy dressing up in nice clothes or going shopping? Should I enjoy beauty? I've always been into beauty, into arts, music. And, you know, I was the kid that I was listening to Mozart instead of listening to, I don't know, Limp Bizkit or whatever the fuck was back in the day. I've always been into that, but I felt ashamed. I couldn't show it. I couldn't talk about it. And I couldn't even show it within myself. I wouldn't even allow myself to become more beautiful. Even the word, just saying it, I was like, damn, that's, a, that's like a gay word. That's like a fucking feminine word. I cannot even say beautiful. It was fucked up. <laughs> and I remember watching TV shows that talked about this and about transformation, about you know, beauty and fashion. I loved it. There's another show called What Not to Wear. Oh, I used to love that show. And the other guy, uh, what's the gay, what's the name of that guy? Team, I forgot the name. Ah, anyway, yeah. it's a fashion guru, right? Yeah. But I would see it on my own at, at night when nobody was around, everyone was sleeping because my, my, I have one sister and one brother, right? My brother would tease me all the time. He's bigger than me. I'm, I'm the youngest of them all. So he would punch me like, hey, you gave it. Boom, boom, boom. Man. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Blah, blah, blah. And then the friends that I had, the in quotes friends, because I really didn't have any friends. And I'm not just saying that. I really, there were pieces of shit. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they would tease me as, as well. They would be like, man, you're weird, man. You, you're wrong. You're doing it all wrong, Pablito. That's not how you do it. That's not how a man is supposed to be. And then women as well would make fun of me. But because I thought, okay, you know, I'm not gay, but I can talk with women about this, right? With my girlfriend, whatever. But they would also be like, really? You like that? Isn't that a little bit weird for you? So I, I was like, what? Okay, then... I don't like fashion then, okay? I'm not gonna care about how I look. And I started to, I, I went the opposite way, right? The, the rebellious and trying to be like, yeah, well, fuck how I look. And I'm gonna get a piercing. I'm gonna get all these and that. And <laughs> it was funny, man. Thank you for sharing that, first of all. And, yeah. and I mean, there's so many people that are labeled, right? And uh, there's so many layers of us as human beings, mm-hmm. right? You can you can love fashion and be heterosexual. You can be homosexual and hate fashion. Like there's no no exactly. labels, exactly. and it's so interesting how we label other people, mm-hmm. and then we suppress. Sometimes we suppress stuff in ourselves, and I think we all do that because, especially when we we're young, True and if that. we don't have the right role models. We are afraid of showing who we are. And in your case, True. you end up on the ledge of a fucking building. Yeah. Uh, 
So what happened after that? Your mom sent you to Europe to travel. Or yeah. Can you just talk about that? And yeah, yeah, of course. So yeah, after that, after she didn't know what to do with me, the psychiatrist that was giving all the pills, were giving the, the prescriptions, he said, he said, you know what? This kid needs to realize that there's more to life. There's so so many beautiful things out there, and he needs he actually needs to go there and experience it. So I was surprised that a psychiatrist said that, right? And he was getting the money and everything. We said, no, 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 no. I mean, he's still gonna have to take the pills, whatever. But yeah. so she sent me to Europe, and oh my God, Europe, right? I mean, you know it. Fucking <laughs> Europe is beautiful. What was the first place you came to? Uh, Switzerland. 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 Yeah, it was, man, I loved it because I had. The only friend, the only person that I could connect with and be more like myself, it was, and it is still today, it's a friend of mine that lives in Switzerland, he's Swiss, and uh, he said, well, you know, yeah, come here and come live with me, spend some time, and you, because Switzerland and Europe overall, right, you can travel just, I don't know, like half an hour and you're already on a different <laughs> country, It's everything is so clustered. Yeah. So I went there and I started immediately. I felt the difference, especially coming from Mexico. Because in Mexico, yeah, it's a third world country. Okay, We have a lot of money. We have a lot of opportunities. Yes, but there's not a lot of education. There's a lot of ignorance and a lot of macho, um, you know, like a way of being and, and hitting women and being like, eh, and it's, yeah. it's, it's bad, man. It's bad. So getting outside of that which is what I always saw, right? I was always in Mexico, whatever. And then I saw that so different. I was, whoa. First of all, people dress up nice here. <laughs> like, I love that. Yeah, this is my kind of thing. And they, and they were so warm. I remember the first time I felt so like, okay, I'm in a different place. Uh, there was this guy, I was just walking around uh, downtown in Switzerland, in Bern. And there was this older guy that said, ah, you don't look from around. Where were you from? Mexico City. But immediately my Latino... Background was like, what the fuck? Did, wait, wait a second. Wait, who are you? What do you want? I was already like on the move, like I'm a big the hell. And he was talking, making small talk, whatever. And I said, hey, you want to go grab some coffee or whatever, you know? Yeah. And I was like, hell no, I'm not going to go with a stranger and get some coffee. No. But then my friend told me like, no, man, that's how we are right here. We, we don't, we don't, we have no... Uh, Negative. Well, yeah, you have, but you know, you, you know what I'm saying, right? Like no hidden mm, agenda. Yeah, no, no agenda. We, we, he just wanted to get to know you, man. So that was like, wow, this is something else. So I didn't know that people could be nice like that, right? And I'd be nice to me too, and then dress nice. So I felt, I felt different, and also because nobody knew me there, I felt more free to be myself, right? Whatever that means, because now I'm. Kind of against saying be yourself, I say be the best version of yourself. Because being yourself, you can be a piece of shit and you're being yourself. So don't just be yourself, man. Like work upon yourself, right? So I felt more free. I felt like, okay, I can I can dress different, I can talk different, I can I can I can allow myself to try something new, to try a different aspect of Pablo. Let's let's explore together, Pablito. Let's go, boom. And it worked. People responded to me different differently uh, and I just started to develop a new persona within myself and and I, I think that was that was pretty amazing man the, the whole the whole experience of being in, in Europe and then of course I went to Italy and that's when I really got into fashion because I was already in Italy right I was like wow man I got into a little like a diploma right over there to learn about pure fashion I ended up not liking it because there's a lot of fakeness within the fashion industry right a lot of people just showing off and what's the latest trend and who has more money and who's slimmer. I'm like, nah, no, no, no. It's got to be something else. I remember, I'll pass it back to you, man, after I finish this. No. I remember that when I was especially in Italy, I, was, I would see uh, in Tuscany, right? I would see like, how do you say the People from the country, country people, like humble people, dressed up real nice with a blazer and they look phenomenal. And, but they were unaware of it. They were not even aware that they looked good. It was just part of their culture. So I was like, okay, I want to learn that. How, how, how comes that it's so different in America, in Mexico? What do you have? Is it the water? Is it the wine? Is it the pasta? What the fuck is <laughs> happening here, man? There, there's got to be some. There's got to be a hidden psychology behind this. And that's when my mind was like, okay, boom. I think I want to do this for the rest of my life. Like being to fashion and all that. And I already had the background of 
this TV show Queer Eye for a Stray Guy, yeah. right? That they would uh, help people, help men put their shit together, <laughs> basically, their whole life, based on not only fashion, but psychology and everything. So I said, hmm, I wonder if I can do the same thing. But well, <laughs> No, I love that. And I mean, Pablo, this is, this is your show. We're honoring mm. your journey. Uh, my job is to thank listen you. and ask thank the right you, questions. So thank you. Uh, one thing that I, I want to want to touch upon is that something you said to me that really resonated with me was like uh, a lot of times they say start with the inside and work yourself out. Mm-hmm. If you if you have bad self confidence, if you don't feel good. But you did it differently. Yeah. Uh, can you just share that and, and talk a little bit? Because that's a very interesting way of doing it. And I, and I, I think when, when you said that, I think that happened to me as well. Mm, that, I love it. I think people are ashamed sometimes to admit it. I know I was at first. Now I say it and I teach it, right? Because there's something like people want to show off like, yeah. I meditate or I did something, I'm stronger on the inside and now I don't give a fuck about how I look, whatever. But what people don't realize about this universal law, which is as within, so it's without, as above, so it's below, is that as without, so it's within, right? The word is right there. So if if it's the same, I said, okay, maybe I can trick my brain into this thing, this idea of fake it till you make it. I wasn't faking that I'm the big shot, I have money because I had no money, right? I grew up without a father. My mother, she had to take care of three kids. We had no money, literally. We were poor, middle class, poor. So uh, I, I ended up not going to the university in what, and whatsoever because we didn't have the money. It's not because I wanted to be rebellious. It's because we didn't have the money. So I said, okay, what if I can trick my brain? Because I already felt like that every time I dress up good. And I saw it with my sister, for example. I saw it with my brother as well. When they were, when she wore a dress, a beautiful dress that would fit her nice, I saw a spark in her eyes. And I would see that with my girlfriends as well. And then I would see it with my brother. I'm like, okay. So I know it within myself. I can feel it. Every time I, I look phenomenal, whether it's a color or something, I, I just something shifts. I dress, the, uh, I, I stand up differently. I own the space. I feel like I'm, I'm, in an armor, right? I can, I can take up the world. So I said, okay, so let's do it backwards. Let's do it the, the, the opposite way, right? I started dressing up with things that would make me feel uncomfortable at first, like a white um, blazer, something as simple as that, a white blazer. I know that white is a super bright color, gets a lot of attention. And if you're just coming up as a kid with me that doesn't really know himself, like, okay, I'm going to do it. I look at myself in the mirror. I said, damn, I look good. I feel good, man. So a smile would, would show up in my, in my face. So that alone, now I know, now I understand what, what, what was happening, right? Is you are releasing the same chemicals as when you are taking drugs, as when you are feeling like loved. It's the same chemicals just within yourself. You are creating them by something so simple as wearing clothes that actually fit your color, your proportions or whatever. So I felt good, right? I started doing it and eventually my brain caught up with me, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Instead of me cutting up with my mind, I'm already there. I would do it the opposite way. I was like, okay, let's pretend with my fashion, with my clothes, with my body language, with the way that I walk. I remember <laughs> doing an exercise in my mind every time I walked into a room I would give myself like a, like a tiny challenge. At least five people need to watch me right now. At minimum, five people need to turn their heads and acknowledge that I'm in the room. And of course, it could be, I, I did diff- different things. I would walk, you know, the way that, that you walk, I don't know if you realize that, but there's a swag, there's like a rhythm to the way that you walk. So I would make more noise than people would look, right? Or just in my mind, I would think, okay, I, I'm like, um, like a Hulk, like the Hulk, you know, like every step that I take, Boom, it's resonating every, everywhere. So I would hold that in my brain and of course I would look good. And yes, I would get the looks. Everyone like, wow, he looks different. And you know people, they always, and they, they still do, they always ask you, oh, what's the occasion? I'm like, come on, man, life. Life is the occasion, <laughs> enjoy life, right? But I would love doing that. And yes, I mean, I did a bunch of, the, of other stuff, of course. You know, I started 
on the path of becoming the best version of myself, of developing my mind, my brain, my brain, my emotions, my my, my spirit, my, my soul, my fashion. I started to connect the dots, basically. But the first thing, the first step that I took was just dressing up nice and I would get different reactions from people. That was it. I was still a piece of shit on the <laughs> inside, right? I was still insecure. I still didn't have any money, no job, no nothing. I still felt like, oh man, I'm still this awkward kid that I think it doesn't fit in with no one. I don't know my tribe. But I dress up nice and I get a different reaction. How about that? Even my first job. I didn't go to school. I didn't go anywhere. I remember going and being super honest, right? The first job, a job interview, dressing up nice. Well, I would ask my mom, I would ask my, my brother, like, what do you do when you're, this is my first interview, right? I'm not going to show up with a black, white blazer. No, 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 you wear a suit, whatever. <laughs> Me asking fashion advice for my family, that's funny, man. <laughs> anyway, um, and I would show up and I would be so blunt and honest, like, hey, yeah, you know, I don't know nothing. I'm new. I want to learn. What's up? And they would be like, nah, get out of here. We need someone with experience. We need someone with college degree, blah, 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 all that shit. So then I did it the sneaky, the sneaky way. I would dress up so sharp, better than anybody else, than everyone else. And they would treat me differently. Like, oh, this guy knows his shit. And I would start lying. Like everyone does, <laughs> right? In their fucking resume. Like, oh, I started saying, not, not lying, blunt, like really, really lying. I was just manipulating perception. I went to Europe. I did a diploma over there. So I said, yeah, I studied fashion in, uh, in Italy, in, in Firenze. And we'd be like, whoa. And I would look and I would talk differently. I would move differently. I would, you know, sit differently. And they would respond to that. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm onto something, man. I'm onto something. There's something behind the power of an image. Yeah. So that, that was what got my, my attention, right? <laughs> I love that. And I think, I mean, image is important. It, it's... Yeah. It's everything until you get to know somebody, right? Yeah. Uh, then it can change very fast, I think. But yeah. the first impression is like, hey, this guy is it's sharp. It's, uh, I want to talk to him. I want to get to know him a little bit more. Uh, can we talk a little bit about, because I know you, at this point, you were also into the pickup game, yeah. right? And how... Who did you learn that from and how did that help you mm. in becoming a better human being? Yeah. Uh, because the pickup game changed a lot for me too because I mm -hmm. went, I think we went on a similar uh, ro ro yeah. uh, road instead of just going into um, what is it? Uh, a straight way of meaningless <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we started learning a little bit more yeah, about ourselves yeah, and right. actually seeing, hey, if somebody's gonna love me, True. I gotta fucking love myself. Exactly. Oh man, yeah, I can quote you on that, man. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I went as I started to, you know, mingle with the idea that I could become someone else and be successful and all this. And I said, like, I would look at the conditions of my life and be like, fuck this, man. I'm gonna be rich. I'm gonna be this. And of course, I didn't know how to talk to women because I was awkward, right? But I would get the looks from all the women because I would look different. I would look sharp, sharper than the rest of the people that I was hanging with, right? Yeah. I would look phenomenal. But I didn't know what the fuck to do with it. I got the attention, but I didn't know what to do with it. So that's, I started, I don't know, I don't really remember. Well, the, it was reading the game yeah. from Neil Strauss. But I really don't remember how I got into that. I think it was a, an advertising or a video or something on the internet. And then I bought the book. Immediately, I got like, whoa, I love this shit. And then I started reading the mystery method. Then from there, I started learning from him and all of his videos. In Mexico City, it was not a thing yet, yeah. right? It was still, nobody knew about that. Did it work? Did the methods work? Oh, fuck, yeah. It did it work, <laughs> my friend. It worked like fucking magic. Yeah. <laughs> it was, and, and that also was like, okay, I already know about the fashion and it works. And then I do the opener and then I go, oh man, I'm, I'm becoming a fucking lethal weapon, man, damn. I was so, <laughs> I loved it, man. It worked, it worked. So I said, okay, I have no one to do game with around here in, in Mexico, right? So I started jumping into groups or into um, blogs and I don't this remember. This was before Facebook, right? Yeah. So where before. did you find people? On forums, basically, right? Forums, exactly, yeah. on forums. And then Facebook came in and then I started meeting up with, with people that were doing practicing game here in America. 
So I would uh, tell them my interactions and to have some back, some some feedback and and so on and so on. But it helped me a lot on the discovering of of the self discoverment of being a man, basically. Pick up and game helped me rediscover my manhood, literally, because I didn't know what what the fuck I was doing after before that, and allowed me to connect with people as well because I was very insecure, very insecure, and it, in a way. It uh, breaks the shell. It breaks the shell when you're learning how to do with social dynamics, right? Which is basically that. But not only that, that led me to a door with millions of different possibilities. It was not just about women. I caught, on, I caught that very early. Because there's a quote on that mystery says that allow pickup to enrich your life and not the other way around. Something like that, right? That you should not be just about, yeah, getting the woman. Yeah, you know, I like you, and yeah, I want to get you to my bedroom. Yeah, let's fuck. No, no, no. So I love that, but I've always been to, like, different. I'm telling you, I've always been weird, man. <laughs> so I said, okay, cool. Now imagine if you can apply this same confidence that I have now approaching a set of, a, a group of women, beautiful women. If I have the same, same confidence, I know that I can fuck shit up in sales. Without having anyone tell me that, I was like, okay, let's see if I can do it. And I started searching on the internet. If, the, if it was possible, if there was another group that was kind of similar to pickup and game, but they were doing something, and that's how I got into self-development. I got with uh, Anthony Robbins and all these beautiful things that really transformed my life upside down, man. Wow. It was really beautiful, yeah. It, it, is, it is so interesting how one thing can lead to another too. And I think a lot of times in life we are we're negative to things we don't know, right? Yeah. And it all depends on your perception, right? Exactly. And what do you do with that? Uh, so, so what do you want to tell to people out there now that are, maybe they grew up without a father, without a mother, and they're like struggling in life. They, they mm -hmm. know there's something more and maybe they're, they bought Mozart as their first record, just like you did, <laughs> or they just feel weird, like yeah. we all do sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah. we're all weird. Yeah. yeah, what, 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 what do you want to tell to them? Like, what can yeah. they do to start loving themselves a little bit more? Well, that's exactly why I made my mission to help people like me yeah. on my situation. You know, I remember thinking, imagine if I would have had me the way that I am right now as a kid. Oh man, it would be so different, right? So that's why I started doing what I do right now, you know, talking, doing books and all that. What can I tell them, man? It's a whole process, right? We're all weird. I think that we are all weird in our own way. We think that, um, you know, on, on a deeper level, I know that everyone is very insecure. I know that. You know that. Le learning pickup, you know the tens and the, and the nines. You see like, hey, yes, she's beautiful, but she's the most insecure out of all. She's super hot, but she's super insecure. And I've seen that with people also with money. They have all these beautiful houses and they're insecure. So I would say just allow yourself to be human. We're experiencing life and life, if you, if you analyze life, the cosmos, God, whatever you believe in, it's all embracing, it's all acceptance, right? It's, it's about embracing life as it is. Life, you, I mean, a cockroach is part of life. You cannot make it any less. It's part of life. And the sun comes up for the cockroach, for the worm, as the same as you and me. So I think sometimes we beat ourselves too hard because we fall into the labels, as you said. Uh, we think that because I'm Mexican, I need to be this. Because I'm from Chile, I need to be that. Because I'm from Macedonia, I need to be this, I need to be that. And, and, and sometimes it's not even us. It's unknown, unknowingly because of our ancestors, because of our family. The moment we are born, we are being labeled, the, we're being told what to do, what to feel, what to think, what to, what to eat, even that. <laughs> we are born into a fucking matrix. It's disgusting, man, right? I see it and it's uh, the, the, the religion and everything. So my first advice, and what I always tell people and my customers is, allow yourself to be human. Allow yourself to be human. Oh, and people tell me like, well, what is that? Yeah. Motherfucker, what, what do you mean what it means to be human? It's well, hard to be a human right? though. <laughs> but it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I did this morning because uh, on that event again, yeah. uh, we're talking about that and I I, I tried to, to learn from as many people as I can. Yeah. And you said something, it's like, 
get totally undressed and look at yourself in the mirror. Did you do it? Yeah, I did it. That's and, good. And I, I did it this morning because I said, I, I got, got to do it. And what happens when I did that, and maybe you can share why mm-hmm. the exercise is good, but I just want to tell you my experience yeah. was one thing that I, the first thing that happened was like, wow, before, if this was like five or 10 years ago, I wouldn't have loved what I've seen. Wow. Uh, and I also saw now, I'm not, I'm not a drawing of a, a like the bodybuilding yeah. magazine. <laughs> I'm not, even though I'm fit, I'm trained, I'm not a drawing of that, yeah. but I am perfect in my way. You know, I had my nose is crooked because I'm a martial artist. I had a lot of mental issues with that. I used to be overweight. I used mm. to have a lot of mental issues with that. But now when I was looking at myself, I, I don't know, it sounds very, very weird, but I almost, I almost got a semi hard on. <laughs> I don't know if that's part of the exercise and it sounds oh, crazy, shit. but uh, I just wanted to be honest and yeah, tell, no, you, tell, it, you, yeah. tell you what happened. And it's not because I'm, I've, I'm trying to have an ego or something. It's yeah, just no, that no. I'm just starting to love myself yes. as I am. Exactly. Yeah. Oh man, that's beautiful. I'm glad mm-hmm. that you that you uh, said it right here, right now, man. So so openly. That, that's that's what's up. <laughs> yeah, the exercise is super super powerful, and it's yeah. something so simple. Just yeah. look at yourself naked, totally yeah. naked, completely alone for at least ten minutes. First of all, people nowadays think that they don't even have ten minutes for themselves, which is fucked up, right? If you don't have ten minutes for you, you're doing something wrong, man. I can't help you right there, man. Come on then people don't love, don't love themselves. People don't like what they're seeing within themselves. They are not comfortable with, on, with, within their own skin, right? So going back to what I was saying is allow yourself to be human. And be, what it means being human, it means fucking up. It means having a little love handles over here. It means not being perfect. You are perfectly unperfect, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that is life, God damn it. We are being bombarded by bullshit all the time that you're supposed to be this. You're supposed to eat this, eat that, be perfect. No, no, no. But the perfect way in America is different than in Italy. And oh, the first thing is just shut everything down. Just, just, just don't pay attention to it. Or pay attention to podcasts like this. That you're helping people. You're giving them things that actually help and grow and build something better for their minds. Right? It's cut the bullshit with the 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 TV. Do not watch TV. All these things because. Me being a professional image consultant, I've worked with, poli- with po- politicians, I've worked with the government. They're manipulating you. They're manipulating us, basically. With very, very sneaky, subconscious messages that you're not even aware of. Mm-hmm. Shit, sometimes I'm not even aware of that. But that is what is destroying our self-esteem. Always comparing ourselves to others. Not feeling like we deserve, like we, like we are hot. Even if you are brown, black, purple, yellow, I don't care, ra- rainbow color. Yeah. You're love yourself like that. That's part of my mission, man. That's what I love. I love getting to people like, yeah, you can do, you want to do a plastic surgery? Yeah, you can. But before you do that, if you have the money, I mean, okay, do it. But before that, get to love, accept, and acknowledge who you are the way you are. Can you be hotter? Yeah. Can you be richer? Yeah. Can you be smarter? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's infinite possibilities. However, that's like an excuse sometimes, right? That we give ourselves like, oh, I could be stronger. Well, doesn't matter. If I'm fat, if I'm strong, I love myself. Yeah. I love myself. It's stepping into something that is beyond the physical. This is why it gets a little bit spiritual and emotional and psychological because yes, you have to deal with all these different aspects that make you you. What makes you Peter Peter? You think it's the way that you dress? Hell no. I could be butt naked right here right now and I will still spill a lot of knowledge. I will still be me and I will still look better than everybody yeah. <laughs> without any fucking clothes on <laughs> with all that. my fucking pancita and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but you know? it's hard because we feel like we're judging ourselves and we're judging others, you know. It's, True. It's, it's crazy. Like, True. Uh, why do you think we do that as human beings? Like always looking for the next thing or like, it's never enough. I'm never good True. enough. My podcast is not big enough. My company is yeah. not doing well enough. My next movie is not uh, doing well enough or whatever it is. Like, why are we 
Like, why are we always like yeah. that? Well, part of it, I think, is because there's a lot of us now, right? There's a lot of people. The world has never had so many habitants. You know, we're, what, more than 7 billion now, right? So everyone is trying to go after the same shit. We all want money, we all want fame, we all want the same thing, followers, blah, blah, blah. I, I have my own podcast. Hey, I want my podcast to do better than yours. Nah. Maybe that's the mentality of people, right? Now I see it like, come on, man. It's just, we're all living under the same fucking earth, under the same sun. Why don't we just allow ourselves to be humans? Like I said, I know it doesn't make any sense if you're not aware, right? Yeah. If you allow life to happen as it is, not as you want it to be, as it is, you will see that you will live a life more, more at ease. You will be more like, okay, it's not that you're going to be a hippie, not do anything. Like, hey, if it happens, it'll happen. No, but you carry yourself differently. Yeah. Your fashion is different. Your aura is different. Your podcast is different. You feel that this relaxed aura, like you don't care at the same time you care. And I know it doesn't make any sense, and I'll, I need to explain this. This is the concept of yin and yang and all of this, right? The opposites, they are part of the same. What you think is the duality is what you think is, oh, it's crazy, man. How can I be relaxed but at the same time be focused? That doesn't make any sense. You being a martial artist, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? You need to be relaxed. Otherwise, the kick is not going to be, if you're tense, you're not going to do it. <laughs> but you need to be focused. You need to be sharp. I think that is the right balance, which is super hard though, right? Because the, when you try to bring together these two opposites, these two opposite ideas, values, beliefs, that's when energy gets created. I see it as, um, as a battery. You have the, the positive and the negative, right? And they're opposites. They're opposites. They, but because they're opposites, that's when energy gets created. When you plug the battery into the receptor, the whatever, energy gets extracted out of it because it has the dualities. But what we need to do is we need to become, we need to open ourselves up. We need to become receptive so that then the energy can actually be harvested and, and, and extracted. And that's what I see. Most people are very much in a shell, being fake, listening to what he's trying to say. Okay, Pablito, you're into fashion then. That's why I came dressed up like this. Because I know that you know that I'm into fashion. I know that you know that I'm an image consultant. You saw me with a pink suit. I said, no, you know what, man? I'm not going to bring a suit today. Fuck it. Because I'm not what you're supposed to, to, to I'm, I'm not who you think I am, right? So people are very much like uh, afraid and, and in a shell and listening to others or they're like this. What they need to do is they need to open up. What does it, that, that mean? Open up with their body. <laughs> you know that doing a lot of exercise, it helps you being more relaxed. It helps you opening up. You get more confidence. That's what I mean. It means opening up in emotions as well. That's, I fucking hate seeing men not being in touch with their emotions. Talking like, oh, that's some feminine trait. Man, that's for women. No, fuck no, man. Being emotional is part of being a human being. You see what I mean by being allowing yourself to becoming a human? <laughs> it's funny that we need to, to teach people how to be human now, man, because yeah. we're so disconnected from ourselves and from each other. Fucking crazy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I... I I think a lot about this because what my mission is to redefine the concept of success yeah. and study that to, to help people find their own type of success and also know that what is most important for you in your life? Is it just happiness or is it mm. just success or is it to find some type of balance? Because not always does success and happiness walk hand in hand True. depending how you define it. And I think it's important that we don't look at success, like your success is different from mine. Yeah. Maybe the best thing for you is to have a Lamborghini. Maybe yeah. the best thing for me to have a shed in Thailand and raise my kids or yeah. something else. We don't yeah. know. Yeah, exactly. And we all, we're all different, which is totally okay. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, nonverbal and verbal mm -hmm. communication because yeah. you, I know you're an expert in this area. Can you just share a little bit like, what can we do as human beings to be perceived a little bit better? Because a lot of people struggle with mm -hmm. communication, both yeah. with the, the same sex, but also when they're attracted to somebody. Yeah. So can business. you share that? Yeah, yeah. business yeah. and all of that. Yeah, true. Well, it go, to going back to what you said about judging, 
We judge, right? Before I get into the actual, I'm, I'm going to share some yeah. beautiful <laughs> knowledge. We'll judge, and it's part of it. But maybe the word is misinterpreted. I like to say it, we assess the situation. We observe. I like to, to observe. I like to be assessed. I, I, I like to understand my situation. And we are doing the same. It is part of survival. We're trying to survive. It is part of our mechanisms of, of survival, right? So if I see you, I'm already decoding everything that you are saying with your body language, with your, the colors that you're wearing, with your fashion, with the tonality that you use, all of that, all of that. So I'm not judging you in a negative way, like, oh, you mother of a... no, I'm not doing it in that way, right? I'm, I'm analyzing the situation so that I can either connect with you or, or walk away from you. We all do that. However, we can learn. This is a tool that needs to be developed, like style or body language. We are not born with it. We are born with it. We are part of it. We have, we have a body, but that doesn't mean that you know the language. You have a tongue, but that doesn't mean that you learn English, right? If you have a kid, in a, if you leave it alone in, a, in an island, he will not know any language, even though he has the tools, right? So all of this is a tool that needs to be developed. It's the same thing with the body language. People think that, oh, yeah, no, whatever, no, 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 no. Remember, you're getting judged. You are getting analyzed. And it happens in less than 10 seconds. In less than 10 seconds. It's about six point blah, blah, blah. I don't remember. That's how you're getting analyzed in an instant. By the way that you look, the way that you have, how you talk, the way how you walk, how you're standing, if you're standing up straight, if you're touching yourself. Unknowingly, man, this happens so quick. So that's why you want to catch before it happens. You want to learn. You want to you be as prepared as you can, right? Yeah. Whether it happens or not, well, you know, we all fuck up. But at least I'm prepared. At least I have some sort of at least, uh, like control, some of it. So what are some things that you can do? Yeah, the people can read this now on, on, social, on, on, yeah, on social media, on internet. It's uh, all over the place. If you want to create rapport, instant rapport, you need to copy their body language. Uh, another one is you always need to, you need to dress up, uh, dress up, straight up. You need to... Uh, be standing straight up, right? You need to stand in a very, you know, in a way that makes you feel more like have, an, have a presence. Because I see most people and uh, when they're walking, they're unaware of their own body. They're just walking like zombies. So you need, first of all, you need to be aware that you have a body and how you walk. So there's a cool exercise that I was taught, which is you imagine a string passing all the way through your body and someone is pulling, pulling you up. So that immediately, whoop, you walk differently. It makes you... As you said up. that, I'm all, I instantly yeah, yeah. was like, Can hey, you imagine yeah. like, whoop. I need to go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So being aware of that, that will shift your image as well, not only what you wear, right? What else? Uh, like, again, like I said, people are very closed, emotionally, mentally, whatever. You see that in their body language as well, because they're insecure. So they're trying to cover themselves. So if I was not very confident right now, I would be like, yeah, so... Talking not very loud, so thank you, Peter, for having me. Oh, oh. fuck. <laughs> Speak up. Speak up. Never be afraid of your fucking voice, right? And of your body. And if you see my, my belly, who gives a fuck? You've been fat, he's been fat, she's been fat. I, you're not perfect, man. <laughs> I know that I, if I analyze you, I'm going to find something that is not perfect from you. So, yeah, look at it. So what? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> so another one. So open up. Open up. Own your space. Not in a rude way, because sometimes I've seen customers that they do it the wrong way, and they're like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're becoming a little bit rude. No, no, no. You want to be... Um, just open. Open up. Open up. And it's going to be uncomfortable, of course. But, you know, <laughs> you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, and that's what growth is, right? Another one that I could give is the facial expressions. Again, people don't pay attention. People think and believe that nonverbal communication happens with the body language, just, you know, moving around. And I got that from the Italians, by the way, like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> it's good. But um, the, the facial expression as well, right? You know that the best antidote to relieve stress is a big smile. Yeah. You smile and you're telling your brain, like, oh, man, relax, it's good. You're, going, you're doing great, Pablito. Keep, keep at it. And also... It is the only universal language. I don't care if you speak my language or not. I don't care if you speak English or not. If I smile, 
you'll get you you'll understand what I'm what I'm trying to to convey, right? Like, hey, what's up? It needs to be genuine. So the whole the, all, every muscle needs to be used, not just <laughs> you know fake. I can do it. I cannot even do it anymore. So that's it's uncomfortable using all of your face when you're talking, because people sometimes when they are insecure, they're just like trying not to get attention to themselves, right? I know that. What else did I want? Well, yeah, but, yeah. no, I love that. And <laughs> there's a lot, man. I could go on and on. That's yeah. why I wrote eight books, man. It's just there's a whole science behind this it's amazing and uh, like how how do you talking about writing eight books like how's your process when you decide to write a book and how do you how do you write a book it's because it's quite remarkable you know it's it started like similar to your story i said oh man i'm gonna be such a badass if i have a book <laughs> and now i can go into uh you know with a client like hey man i have a book what's up <laughs> <laughs> and i'm gonna you know i'm Immediately, I'm going to feel more intellectual and I'm going to feel like I'm the shit and whatnot. And also because there's so much behind what I do. The science that studies image. And what is image? Image is perception. What is perception? That's why I said, God damn, how do I break it down? Well, I'm just going to start writing. And I remember writing it in blogs, just blogs. On the internet, I started writing for companies. I started writing for um, a magazine, Gentleman magazine and I would just do articles and then I said damn I'm spilling a lot of fucking good information what if I just compel all of this and that's how I created my first book the rules of style I just literally out of all the things that I was writing I said well, okay I'm just gonna put them all together and make them nice make them correlate with it, with each other and that's it and then I said man there's more to it there's the psychology of colors there's body language there is tonality, right? Because that's another form of nonverbal communication. That's something that I work with politicians, telling them what to write and then how to deliver the message, how to convey the message. So I said, damn, man, I need to write all this down. And that's how I got it into it. Just my, everything that I've been learning and everything that I've, I've been doing with my customers, I just started writing, 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 writing everything. And it doesn't make any sense. But then after I write everything, this big cluster of just words, then I start picking them like, okay, boop, this is chapter one. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I love that. And it, it, the thing is, when you're talking about this, I'm thinking about the things in life and how we, we want to label things, especially in, in countries like America, like three minute abs, like yeah. <laughs> seven minute um, biceps or yeah. like six steps to... The five uh, to, steps to write a book. Yeah, yeah. five steps. <laughs> <laughs> but life is more than like a three step or a five minute thing. Yeah. And people like when you, for example, karate, people that are uneducated, uh, they would say, oh, so you, do you break boards? <laughs> yeah, some people might do that. But being a martial artist is much more than that. Yeah. It's about showing up in every situation as a martial artist. It's about uh, controlling your mind and body. It's about True. putting yourself in, in difficult situations, mm -hmm. having great relationships, similar to like being an image consultant, right? It's True. so much more than just, oh, so you help people have a shirt, take a nice shirt on, like it's- Wear a suit. Or wear a suit. Shit. <laughs> and also as human beings, yeah. we are different. And I, I love what you said, because I, not too long ago, you were out hugging trees, right? That's yeah. part of your journey. <laughs> I do it. And that doesn't mean that you are not good at other things, right? But it's so yeah. easy to label each other. Exactly. What do you want to talk uh, say about that? Like that we put always put labels and we can't yeah. be indifferent. Like if you're if you're a karate guy now, all of a sudden I can't do ballet or I can't I can't be a singer now. Yeah. Or whatever it, it might be. be. Business. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Well, we are made out of layers, right? Human beings are made out of different layers, many different layers. But we, are, we always like to make things simpler. We like to oversimplify shit. <laughs> so that's why we come up with these crazy ideas that, yeah, they may help when you're just getting started. Like the five steps to become a karate guy, a karate master. Well, yeah, if this is the first, your first approach into karate, maybe you'll get your mind to be more aware of what karate actually means, right? Uh, as you keep, I mean, yeah, that's the first approach. Good, do it. As long as you're doing it, good. I don't care, man. If you're growing, if you're doing something like that, as slow as it is, whatever it is you're doing, just keep growing. Growing. You have to do that. 
But these labels is so true, man. It's so true. Everyone is trying to to fit into something. And I, I tell you this from my own experience, right? I always thought that I couldn't fit in until I realized that it is okay not to fit in. I still don't fit in. I have like two friends and that's it. Two best friends, him being one of them. And that's it. I don't have very close friends. I'm, I'm like the super popular guy and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine being like that. You know what, man? I prefer being completely alone out in nature and hugging a tree and talking to a tree than sometimes being out there in a club. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I, I don't fit in with a normal society. That Well, then that's what I fit in. I fit in in my own non-fittingness. <laughs> you are you and you are beautiful, right? And yeah. I, I love that. So can, you, can we talk about loving yourself? How far yeah. are you on that journey from kind of not loving who you are until uh, today yeah well how far am i yeah oh man i've i've come beyond love now yeah. i just man i love the cosmos i know that i'm part of the cosmos now shit i've transcended that i don't want to get that into shift that for you like when would that shift like hey you know it's a it's another one of my worst days yeah. kind of thing that i that we were talking uh, before i get into that i i just want to go back to what i was saying about the labels because I want to get it out of my mind yeah. which is um, just remember I mean for your the people that are listening right just remember that the labels you're always going to get labeled you're always going to get labeled anyway but those labels need to come from you from within you right? that, that, that's what I wanted to say man yeah you're going to get labeled but yeah but at least it is a label that I picked up not she he whatever or a country I picked it up so if you're going to judge me judge me motherfucker actually I encourage each and every one of you mother <laughs> <laughs> to judge me because I own my shit. I have I have my shit put together. Now I don't care. That's what I want people to have. To pick your own level la labels and be like, okay, I'm gonna put this on almost like a video game. You know, you're playing a video game. You're choosing the character. Well, you know, this character needs to have a mustache. Maybe this character needs to be a little more uh, stronger. But 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 it's the same thing. We're living in a fucking matrix, man. I just decoded the game and be like, okay, this is a game. This is the matrix. I'm gonna choose a character. That's why I have this big ass ridiculous mustache, man. I'm a character. <laughs> Who gives a fuck, right? But um, when did I shift it? Where I started loving more myself? Well, when I started developing my image, that's for damn sure, right? When I started learning about, okay, there are many different styles and my style is this. Oh, okay, so my skin tonality works with this color. So when I started doing that, like the more technical aspect of it, I started loving myself immediately. I started appreciating myself more, the different things that made me me. But then, when it shifted completely, it was when, it was, this was maybe two years ago, man. I started my spiritual journey. I started my spiritual journey about five, six years ago. I've always been into that because I've always been into that. Literally, when I was growing up in middle school, I would be the weirdo kid talking about druids and the Celts. <laughs> man, and I would have people around me. Yeah, the druids, man, and they would fucking talk about the fairies and the gnomes. And yeah, this is fucking phenomenal. I would talk about that. <laughs> so I just go back into that five years ago. I'm like, yeah, I've always been into uh, spirituality and rituals and ceremonies and all that. But about two years ago, I crashed, and I'm not talking about a, a car crash. I'm talking about metaphorically. Everything went down to shit, down the toilet, man. Everything, my business, everything. I had a school and every single fucking student left me. Uh, my business and my own business that I have, which is Style Systems, pff, no one was hiring us. Everything went down to shit. I had customers when in advertising with my woman and they left us. I was like, what the fuck is happening, man? What? what? But I heard a calling. That calling was always there. Remember? You, want, you asked for this, motherfucker. It's almost like a voice that was telling me, you asked for being spiritual, right? Well, now you're going to get really into spirituality. You ask for this? Yeah. Hey, man, you, 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 I'm, the, it's almost like the universe, the universe was, was telling me, hey, you wanted it, right? Yeah. Now deal with the consequences of being spiritual and woke and all this bullshit, right? So I went into, like, you could say, a, a, how do you, a retirement, not retirement. Retreat. A retreat. Yeah. Many different retreats. I learned from indigenous people, all that, and that's when I understood a different type of love, a different type of loving myself. Because when I love myself, I'm loving you. When I'm loving you, I'm loving me, because we're all connected. So when I'm loving the 
nature, I'm loving myself at the same time. So I started understanding that, damn, it's not just about loving me and accepting me. That's a very small way of putting it. Because who, who, who am I? Who is me? I, I'm getting too metaphysical and spiritual, but that was when I really got like, oh, shit. Love is beyond. And love is not just about, yeah, I accept. That's just like the first step. There's different levels to this. And uh, man, uh, I'm telling you, man, it's, you reach a level where you become the very same love that you talk about. You become it. You can, you, it's no longer an action. You are it. Every action, every word. It's beautiful, <laughs> and uh, I love it. Uh, what What do you say to people that are haven't reached that deepness yet, and they're like, "What What the fuck is he talking about?" <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll be like, uh, oh. <laughs> "What is the like the the like? What would you say is the like first step to start loving yourself for people that have yeah. a hard time with that?" Yeah, I would say. Stop comparing yourself, right? Yeah. Stop listening to to the bullshit of the of the media. It's true. I know it sounds like a conspiracy theory, whatever, but yeah, don't look at ads. Don't look at that because they're pushing on an agenda to make you buy what they want, right? So uh, eat this and you'll look phenomenal like this model. Yeah. Wear these. That's why Armani suit or whatever. That's why I'm not into brands because I know that it's just they're pushing an agenda. So the first thing is stop comparing yourself. Stop comparing yourself. That's it. As hard and simple as it sounds, it's very hard and it's very simple at the same time. How do you do it? You need, at first, you need to get mad. I would say that. You need to get angry. Angry at the fucking life when you look at them and like, you motherfuckers have been lying to me all this time. You motherfuckers have been pushing your own fucking agenda some to me all this time. Fuck you. Shut the fuck up and fuck you. You get to get angry, man. Tap into that anger within you. That will allow you to shut everyone up. Because everyone is trying to tell you what to do, right? Hey, Peter, you know, you're doing your podcast. Well, you know, I've been doing... How long have you been doing your podcast? Yeah. Episode 170. Oh, right? well, I've been doing 200. Let me give you an advice. <laughs> you can probably shut the fuck up, right? If you're just getting started, I'm like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to think. Don't tell me what to work. Shut the fuck up. That, yeah, you get angry. You get angry. And then, then what happens is you start like getting more in touch with yourself, listening to you instead of what's outside, right? Then you allow yourself to be like, okay, oh, that, so that's my voice. That's my true voice. It's not my mama's voice. It's not my father's voice. It's not my country's voice. It's not, oh, finally I can hear Pablo's voice. Finally I can see myself. That's why the exercise of looking at yourself naked, finally I can see who I truly am. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Embrace yourself. Yeah, embrace yourself. Right? Hug yourself, as crazy as it sounds. Tell beautiful things to yourself. You know that words, even though a message, maybe the impact of a message only has seven, only 7% seven is words, right? Only 7% of a message is made out of words. But still, words are spells. Literally, it's not some voodoo, crazy, sorcery thing. Words our spells, you are always um, putting out energy. Words are fucking frequencies and energy. So if you're saying, ah, no, you know, I'm fat. If that's how you talk to yourself, you are subconsciously fucking yourself up, yeah. <laughs> unknowingly. So do it as an exercise every morning. I'm so fucking beautiful. I love myself. I love myself. I'm the shit. I'm the best. I keep doing that. That's Brian. I keep doing that every morning. Like, damn, I look good. Even if I don't look good. Because I'm rewiring my brain. Because I know outside, I'm getting taught the opposite. You're not enough. You're not doing enough. Your podcast is not good enough. You're not making enough money. And especially now with social media. I would suggest stop looking at social media. At least stop looking at your motherfucking phone for at least one day. Can, can you do that, guys? Can you do that, guys, nowadays? Can you? It's hard. It's hard for me when I started doing it. Because the first thing I, the, that we do now is we wake up in the morning. And, how many likes do I have? Oh, did this post to get enough uh, engagement? Get the so it's, it's hard. Crazy, yeah. It's hard, man. <laughs> it is crazy. Uh, Pablo, I have two more questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go uh, ahead, I, then, just go uh, on. Uh, I, I mean, we can talk for <laughs> forever, so long, man. Forever, which is which. I, that was why I was so excited to have Thank this you. conversation. Thank I was you. so happy to catch you, catch you on this trip. Thank you. Uh, so, what do you dream about, man? 
Woo! I dream about... I dream about connection. I dream about reaching the next level in the collective, in society, where we are more spiritual. That's what I dream. I dream that we are on the verge, and it's happening, but people getting more connected with their, their soul. That's what I want. People being more connected with their soul, which at the same time is being connected with their ancestors, with their roots, people being rooted. And when you're rooted, your roots are strong, you realize that everything is connected. So my dream is to see that connection with people. Or even if it's not like a hippie, like, I love you, Peter. Yeah, peace and love. No, 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 no. It's that you're so centered within your, your body, your emotions, your psychology, and your soul, that you are a complete human being. And when you are a complete human being, you're the best version of yourself as a human being, right? You are a human being. Then I know that you won't give me any shit because you're complete. You, know, you won't see me as a, comp a competition. Fuck this guy, man. He's doing it his own part. No. You'll see me like, oh, it's another human being. Great. Cool. Keep doing it, man. We might not be friends, but that's fine. We're going to be fine. And the other dream that I have is making it more beautiful than it is. That's my mission. Well, it's not a dream. That's my mission. But <laughs> No, I love it. And uh, I mean, it starts with a dream and then it, be it becomes a mission. That's yeah. something that you're working towards. And, and I love that. Uh, one one last question, something that I ask uh, all my guests, Pablo, is uh, for people watching and listening to this, we love sharing stories, but at the end of the day, we want them taking action. Uh, what is the first step they can do in order to start working on, on their dreams or loving themselves more or whatever it might be? Yeah. I, um, I would say find a way to make your life more beautiful. What do I mean by this? It could be the simplest thing, beautiful with your fashion. Try something different. Today, I'm not wearing anything crazy like I normally do, but I, you know, I'm matching my socks with my t-shirt and with my, and the shoes with my shirt, with my dress shirt. Something as simple as that will make you feel more beautiful than your surroundings. Do your bed, <laughs> fold the fucking, uh, the, 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 your, your clothes. Find a way to make your, your space your car, your house, your surroundings, your office, try to make it more beautiful. What can I do to make it more beautiful? Is it the color? Maybe I can buy a frame? Is it the light? What can I do? Find a way to make your life, yourself, your interactions more beautiful. What can I say to Peter right now that would make our interaction more beautiful? Beauty, that's, that's the first step, beauty. Try to find beauty in everything that you do. Very simple, very simple. Don't go all the way up. Just find a way to 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 um, oversimplify it. You know, yeah, the colors. Think in terms of colors, proportions. Think about how can this be more symmetric. Think think about that. More clean. <laughs> clean your car. I love that. No, be beauty is it's amazing, and 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 something that you you said uh, last week too is like we we're all attracted to beauty, Always. and. Uh, Whatever it might be, if it's a if it's a nice car or even the nature or a per, like a flower is perfect. Like yeah. the nature is perfect. So thank you for sharing that. And uh, Pablo Rivera Espinosa de los Monteros. Wow, <laughs> shit, you what got a it, name. man! I got it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if people want to connect with you, if they want to work with you, work on their style and and mm. and, and image, uh, where can they find you? Yeah, Peter Jumbrukovsky. Did I say it correctly? <laughs> Almost. Oh. Jumbrukovsky. Jumbrukovsky. There you go. Good. Uh, awesome. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to try it. <laughs> no, it's good. I they can go. <laughs> they can go to stylesystems.net. That's my business, right? Or they can follow me on Instagram, YouTube. I'm always putting up content so that to talk more about what we were talking, right? Yeah. What, what is the first step? I'm always sharing videos there. They, they can find me at Pablo Mentor. Yeah. Pablo Mentor, Pablo Mentor. Just like that. And uh, yeah, stylesystems.net or just style systems on Google or Pablo Mentor. I guarantee you I will show up. Awesome. Pablo, thank you so much. Thank uh, you, my brother. Thank uh, you. I loved having you here, sharing your story and talking mm. more with you. I really appreciate you and your time. Thank you guys for watching. And if you're still here an hour and a couple of minutes in, it means that you found some value in today's show. 
and uh, just go out there and make your life a little bit more beautiful. My mission is to help at least 10 million people in 10 years to go after their dreams. To do that, I need your help. So please share this with somebody that can find this valuable and also give us a review on iTunes so more people can find us. And as a thank you, I'll give you a couple of free chapters of my book. Just go to ilovesuccess.co. You can get that over there. Also, we have 170 episodes with amazing game changers, anything from cool guys like Pablo to UFC fighters to real estate stars like your friend and my friend Brian Casella, Ryan Serhan, and many, many others. So that's it. Use this for you to create a better life. Thank you.